everyone happy monday thank you for joining me for another craft night with friends tonight we are hopefully gonna finish our tote bag it's our scaredy cat kitties and kind of like our beetlejuice uh tote bag going on here we have one handle halfway on and then we have to make another handle and get that on as well and then we're done it's gonna be so cute so all right uh, if you're new here my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners and I'm here every weeknight at 8 30 p.m. central time uh, it's a time that we can relax and craft together here so all right uh, we're gonna get going here I do want to let you guys know that I will probably not be on uh, Thursday or Friday this week we are visiting family again I get to see Chad the kitty <laughs> so I'll have to take some take some photos of Chad for for ya <laughs> my mom actually ended up making this uh, the bag as well and it is now Chad's uh, kitty treat bag <laughs> so good to see spoiled little little Chad again uh, on Thursday and Friday so um, so we'll just be on today, uh, Monday, or today, uh, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, I think we'll all talk about like what I think we'll be working on tomorrow and Wednesday uh, in a bit here. So, all right, let's get sewing. Oh, let's get above here first. All right, so here's where we left off. Uh, we got the first little handle on. So I'm doing handles. Uh, you can do handles where you sew it into the bag um, while you're while you're sewing like the lining and the front together but I kind of thought it'd be fun to do that look where it's on the outside like this so we got that those cute little uh squares with the the uh, x through that's gonna make it super duper sturdy on here um so I have it all pinned and ready to go on the other side and then we have our other piece of green here that we cut uh last week and this will be our final um uh, handle here so I think we can get through all that today let's see all right to the sewing machine let's sew the little square I'm gonna do it the same way I did last time I kind of started uh, ooh, there kind of shifting shifting the bag so this is sort of in the middle here I started at the top and I was about a quarter of an inch away from the side and then uh, um, we went around the whole outside and then did, did our little X through it. I think I sewed the sides a hair more too. All right, I think we're square enough. Oh, let's do a little back tack here too. So I didn't quite get this as far done as I thought we would last week. I think maybe because I did these a little slightly more in-depth handles. But that's okay. Then we have a fun project for today. All right, rotating. So I, I need to get make sure that like the handles out of the way that you know I'm not folding over any other bit of the bag when I do this. Um, just I want to make sure I'm only sewing what I want to be sewing here. One more. Let's go. All right. Now let's rotate again. I'm gonna shimmy all the stuff off of my machine again. It's got wonder clips and all that. Thanks, Deborah. Deborah says, what a cute bag. Uh, I think it's turning out really sweet with the little kitty embroidery on and all that. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is the last week for the kitty embroidery, the scaredy cat embroidery before it goes away. It's this month's embroidery of the month and it's going to be October. <laughs> real, real soon here. So we'll be uh, retiring this feller and releasing our October embroidery of the month. All right, so we went around our rectangle. So now I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna aim to there. You could draw a line connecting the dots um, the corners, but I'm just going to aim. That's good enough for me. There. All right. So now I got to go the bottom again. All right. The rest of that X. Row 
update. Hey, that was easy enough. I suppose we could have stayed last week on Friday and finished that up, but oh well, it's done now. Let's do a little back tack here again. And forward. We wouldn't have been able to finish the whole the whole um, thing though, so this is this is fine that we're doing it today. Okay, let's snip this off. I'm gonna get all the little ends. Let's get the little front pieces first. So let me know how your Monday went or how your your weekend went. Or your Tuesday for all y'all in the future overseas. All right, there we go. Two cute little handles with the little X's. Uh, we got half a bag, so, you know, really, we could get creative and we could do one of those bags that there's just like a tiny loop on the other side that you kind of swoop this through the loop and then you have like a bag that's kind of like so, but we're going to do a whole nother normal kind of handle on here. All right, so that's handle number one. So we should have this all measured up and ready to go. Uh, my iron's on, so let's uh, let's get going with that second handle. This takes quite some prep here. All right. Oh, here. I think I'm missing your comments here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to first fold this in half and press it. Uh, fold it so that the wrong side is together. You want you want the nice side exposed. In my case, it's just a solid, so it doesn't matter. I need a slightly longer uh, pressing mat for this, but we'll get it. It'll just be slower. We also get to see my brother and his wife, so that'll be fun. It's been a while. That's that's besides just going and visiting Chad and my mom and dad. <laughs> we we get to go and visit um, my brother and his wife that we haven't seen in in ages too. So that's that's our Thursday plan. All right, so I'm gonna fold both these sides into the middle now, and we'll give that a press and then I'll um, fold this in half and then then we'll, we'll have all of it. So I'm just kind of slowly going down the edge, like making sure that these meet in the middle. If it's not perfect, it's not perfect, but we're going pretty well. So we're basically kind of making some bias tape. Hey Carol, good evening to you too. So I'm thinking, so tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow we um, will most likely be done with this. This is our free week. So the last week of the month uh, this year, we're kind of just using it as a free week. So if there's like a small project we want to work on or uh, something, something like that, or finishing up a project, that's kind of what our free week is for. So here's what I'm thinking. Theoretically, next week, we're going to be working on the splendid, not the splendid sampler, the uh, granny square quilt. Uh, and uh, I would love to get those other two sides sewn on the back. So our back is almost complete. And I actually took a photo, but I forgot to post it. So I'll have to post post the photo. But we just need the two sides on on the on the quilt back. So if we can get those two sides on, then that means that I could bring it to my parents' house and I could sandwich the quilt while I'm there. 
which would be awesome because then next week we could we could start quilting the granny score quilt on my on my other machine and that would just be awesome to get a start on that so that's that's what i'm hoping we can work on tomorrow and um wednesday all right so i'm just going to open up this end and we're going to fold up about a quarter of an inch uh the edge and i'm just going to refold it carefully and this is just so we have our tucked in edge, our nice clean edge right away. Ooh, let's fold it back this way. All right, I'm gonna just give that a little bit of a press and I think I'll throw a clip on that as well, just to hold it up. Hey, Jennifer, hey, Gretchen. All right, let's just put you there. Okay, let's do the same thing for the other side. Thinking ahead for a second there. Well, I, I definitely won't. Um, Gretchen says, I'm worried maybe you could use your mom's machine to free motion quilt. So uh, I will definitely not be able to get all that done <laughs> while I'm there. So I, I'll for sure be bringing it home and quilting on, uh, on my other machine. So I'll get that all set up. Um, it should, the other machines should still work for free motion quilting. And uh, we were going to do the free motion quilting. I've never done this before, but the free motion quilting directions suggested in the actual pattern. And they're pretty detailed, I think. Like the picture of it has like, of the quilting suggested in the pattern is like way in depth. Like stuff I have never done before. Um, so I thought I'd attempt to follow the design that was in the actual example, uh, which is going to be a whole job. <laughs> and actually, we might have to stitch in the ditch first, and that's just where you you stitch. Like once you have your your piece all quilt, or you're like sandwiched um, front and back and batting, you kind of sew through the seams on a few like a few places, like you sew around each block and that sort of thing kind of holds everything down before you start doing the decorative stuff. I think there might be some of that. And if that's the case, I may try and do that on this machine here. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> that's that's a question mark yet, because I don't I don't have a good machine that can do just like a straight stitch. So the, the problem is, yeah, my, my machine that I'll free motion quilt on, the feed dogs, get pushed down too much so I can't it, they don't grab so I can't just do a forward normal stitching with that but this machine I can do that but I don't have a walking foot and a walking foot might be the way to go for um, for this stitching so hmm maybe I don't have a decent machine for this I'll have to think about that a little bit for the stitch in the ditch stuff or i could do it free motion and just try and do it with uh, rulers Ugh. that would be some practice for me you know what maybe that's actually what i should do attempt to practice some ruler work some straight ruler work um instead of just doing the straight stitching with the with the um uh walking foot I don't know. It's all start, starting to sound a little scary. I guess I haven't thought that far ahead. Um, I'll have to look at what I got going on for that. All right. So here's here's my handle, kind of like all ready to go, but unsewn. I'm going to sew, first of all, the two folded edges that are hanging out there. I'll sew down there. And I think I think we're just going to go around like the rectangle here again. So this is um, just the folded edge, but sewing along the edge is going to hold that. It's going to lock that in place. I'm doing the edge with the two on first, just to make sure, it, oops, sorry, just to make sure it stays together. All right, let's get sewing. I'm just going about, I don't know, 16th of an inch or so in. All right, let's back tack a little. Ooh, you guys, this weekend I um, set up my like industrial sewing machine. So I got one of these I got it on like Facebook Marketplace, like literally, like probably eight years ago. Ugh, I can't believe it's been that long. So I got this online about eight years ago from someone in town here. 
And it's one of those old, jukey, industrial, straight stitch machines. So like, you know, what you'd see in a, at a fashion school. Like that's, that's where it came from. She went to the tech college here and um, who I got it from and she just wasn't using it. I mean, it takes up a ton of space. So it was in my basement forever. But we recently just kind of cleaned and rearranged everything in the basement, and I found a spot where it could actually be set up. Um, so I actually have it working. Um, I don't have any extra needles for it, and I'm not quite sure how to wind a bobbin on it yet. So um, there's that, but oops, that lost one of the, to the floor. Uh, but man, you press that pedal and it goes whoosh, like that fast. It's just so, so fast. Um, crazy, crazy. So I'm excited to play around with that. That's my new kind of basement toy. So that I actually did get when, well, you know, when I got this back in the day and after I played around with it a little bit, I'm like, man, this would be great if I could quilt on it. So I actually found theoretically a foot that would, uh, you know, like a darning foot that would make it so I can quilt on that machine at some point. Uh, I think that might be fun to try. If it doesn't, I don't know, it goes so fast. I think I can regulate that though a little bit. But anyway, so I have something new to learn. But I feel good that I finally got that thing kind of up and working and in a spot. It's plugged in. All I have to do is turn it on. I got fabric right next to it. So I'm, I'm stoked about that. All right, I'm almost back to the beginning. I'm just gonna do eh, one more stitch. There we go. But what's so interesting, I thought it was freaking me out a little bit with, with that, um, the sewing machine, because when I sew on this, it kind of has a couple of, like, it's a, it's a slow roll to stop, like, like it has some motion yet. Um, so I have to kind of get used to that and just, like, tap it for it a little bit. Man, with that industrial juki, when I stop, it just stops. Full on just stops. And I'm not used to that <laughs> with, with these vintage machines. They kind of, like, just roll, roll themselves forward a little bit. All right, we got ourselves a handle. All right, so next up we need to um, do all of our kind of placement measuring. So I'll, I'll check what this was. I, I believe it was like three and a half inches from the edge and like an inch and a half down, something like that. So we'll do a double check and do our measurements and see that it matches up how we want and um, call it there. All right, come back, feller. You're so cute. Okay, let's measure. All right, let's go on this one. Okay, so it's three inches from the edge. Okay, so three inches from the edge and about an inch and a half down. Okay, let's, let's do that. And you know, we have have a guide here already. So I want the folded edge, the the side that has just like the one fold versus the two folds. I want that kind of outward. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Here I have it. Here I have the double folded on the outer curve and the one folded on the inner curve. So let's do, let's just repeat that. There we go. Make sure you're not like twisting it a bunch of times. It should be kind of flat, flat here. All right, and I'm gonna want to pin these in place again. So I did do the clips last time. Let's start with the clips because th th those I can easily move. Get our seams laying flat here. So three and one and a half down. Okay, we're going to go a little farther. Uh, 
<laughs> oh man, you guys. So John and I had our physicals today, which already is TMI. But um, I have to tell you, because I just think it's so funny. So the I was talking to the doctor and everything, and you know, she asked what I did, and I'm like, oh, I we uh, I have a company that um, we manufacture embroidery kits and we sell them. So she got all excited, and she's like, oh my gosh, I cross stitch. I do so much cross stitch, and. So she asks about, you know, penguin and fish and, and all that. And she's like, okay, you know, get changed again. <laughs> but I'm going to come back here and I got to show you these, uh, these, um, my uh, Christmas stockings that I cross stitched. <laughs> so she came back and got her phone out and she showed me like all of, um, she, she cross stitched these three, um, Christmas stockings that were large, full size, like Christmas stockings that were all entirely cross stitched. And I'm like, oh my God, this must have taken you like a year and a half to complete all those. Uh, but it was just so funny. She's like, she's like, I can show you because you'll appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so that was just cute. That was my fun story uh, of the day made going to the doctor slightly less not fun. All right, there we go. Three, one and a half again. I think we're good right there. Grab some clips. Boop. There we are. Okay, I need another pin. Probably don't need a pin, but kind of helpful I feel like just to have that secure down here I did get a flu shot I got a flu shot and I got a um, tetanus booster and blood drawn I got all the needles today <laughs> all right I think that looks the same as the other side. I don't think that looks too much further down. I mean, we did sort of measure. I think I kind of aired. I think on this side, I kind of shimmied them down a hair more. Oh God, do I want to get that picky now? Here's the question. So here I'm like, eh, one and a half inches with like the, the extra fatness going over a little. Ugh, I think we're the same. Screw it, we're the same. All right. Let's do the same thing. Draw my little uh, my little um, squares with the diagonals going through, and then we're good. I think let's do this side first. Oh, I, I wonder. Yeah, I don't. She's. I said to her, um, Kimberly's wondering. Well, how long did it take to her to do the three stockings? She did not answer me. <laughs> <laughs> directly um, but she still but she said oh I you know I mean I don't know when she made him because she's an actual doctor but she said that in, in medical school she she didn't answer for that but she said in medical school she would cross stitch all the time just because it was a good uh, just chill moment like whenever she was studying too much or whatever she would just um, cross stitch, so cross stitch has just become her like relaxing time, which I think we can all relate to that for sure. Um, so she didn't quite straight up answer how long it took to do the three stockings, but they were like, you know, foot tall at least, and you know, like maybe 18 inches tall by like, you know, whatever. I, I asked her, are those like all stitched in all the way? And she's like, yeah, this, this one, the blue Ada cloth isn't, um, but the rest of it is, and then, and then she's like, and this one is completely filled in, and it was like all like snow and snowmen and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, that would have taken ages and ages. She should join us. Kimberly says, I I told her, um, told her where we're at. I told her that it's penguin and fish, and she said she was gonna look it up. So we'll see. <laughs> but it was fun. Oh, Kathy says, I've been out of the loop. When did you make the bag? So I just started this bag on 
Thursday, right? We, we did this on Thursday. Yep. So last week, uh, we it was the embroidery of the month. So we stitched up. Oh, here. We stitched up our little scaredy cat embroidery. <laughs> uh, but it, it was an easy embroidery. So we got done on Wednesday. So I thought, eh, let's turn it into a trick-or-treat bag. So we got some fabric. Went through my stash and decided on some fabrics. And uh, so Thursday we cut all the pieces and I think we got basically the fronts and backs kind of done. And then Friday we did um, the pocket. We sewed the pocket on and then we made the, f we cut the handles and did the first handle and got like one of these squares sewn onto the first handle and then today we did square number two on the first handle and now we're we're working on the second handle so just last week so you didn't you didn't miss much oh but you guys we are working on a blog post and we'll have all these videos obviously on youtube yet um so you can you can look back on how to do this but we are breaking it down into a blog post you know, with images and, and all that, and actual measurements. We kind of just made this up. We made up all the measurements on the fly um, based on kind of what I had and what we thought looked cute and what seemed like easy measuring. Um, but we'll have the actual measurements that we ended up using in the blog post. Uh, that should be coming up, you know, a little after we, we finish this up. I'll, we'll definitely let you know when it's when it's up. Ooh, I maybe did not go quite a perfect diagonal there. Maybe I should have drawn it on. But yeah, so if you did want to make a trick or treat bag, and it's early, right? It, you got all of October yet to do trick or treat bags. Um, so we'll have the instructions up and all that if you wanted to do a cute like little embroidered pocket um, trick or treat bag or project bag or kitty treat bag like what mom made <laughs> oh, that chad is a lucky little kitty cat okay and i'll just go to the top again just to meet up from where i left all right so this all this you know i'm fitting the whole bag and the side here this is not making me feel all that confident about um running a whole quilt through this machine. I mean, I guess, you know, the neck or this like neck area. Is that right? The neck? I'm not sure if I'm, that's the anatomy of a machine there. Um, I'm going to call it the neck for now, but like, I guess this neck isn't as, or it's just as big as any of my other non-industrial machines. So Ugh, it's just going to be what it's going to be for quilting. Uh, it's not my favorite dealing with all those um, large, larger than our normal, like small block size projects. It's just more difficult. Ugh, I'm going to have a, well, it's, it's a little cooler now, although today was beautiful, but like it's a little cooler now, so maybe it won't be so bad having a huge quilt draped over me. Oh, I should just send her a kit. That's a good idea, Kimberly. I should send my doctor an embroidery kit. <laughs> it was a new doctor, so I'm... It was uh, our old doctor retired a bajillion years ago, so it's been a while um, for getting physicals and stuff, so... But I like... I li how, what's not to like? She's a cross-stitcher, a crafter, so, I mean, can't go wrong, right? <laughs> That's a weird way to think, but still... It's a good sign, right? Okay, last um, last feller here. Then we're uh, we're basically done for the day, really. I don't really have much else planned. Is this square? I feel like it's angled a little funny. Eh, I think we're fine. I'm gonna trust that we trust that we thought of that when I was placing this. But yeah, so tomorrow, um, tomorrow I want to get the granny square quilt out again and 
get those other two sides on so I can bring that home, sandwich it, or at home, I mean my parents' house, um, so I can bring that to their house and sandwich it and then come back here and then right away on Monday, you know, it's, it's our granny square quilt week, on um, the first full week of the month, um, we can start quilting that crazy will be far enough to quilt it it is about time that's that's what i think uh and i i do have a photo of ooh, should i've done one more uh, it's kind of on the edge but we're doing it um i will post the photo of the back so far up to the penguin and fish crafters group on facebook just because it is like when i'm working on it here it's just such a small space that it's that I can't like lay it out so you can't really see the, the design. We kind of tried to mimic a granny square on the back out of like our scraps. And I saw the image again this weekend. I should have just posted it this weekend. Oh shoot, there. Um, but I think it totally works. I'm happy that we spent some time with it. I know we cut the back apart a few times and put it back together but I think I'm gonna be happy where it ends up. Uh-oh, I think I was supposed to, am I just going around and around? Wait, no, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like trying to see where my stitches are. I'm like, did I just go around like this rectangle twice? But I didn't, I'm not even back up to the top yet. I didn't, yeah, that, that side's not even on yet. Okay, confusing myself there. Now we're back to the beginning and I can um, do the X. But yeah, I'm kind of excited to quilt it because like I said, it is, um, I am gonna tr attempt to quilt it how it's, suggested in the original pattern, which is quite detailed. I wonder if I have it near me. Maybe we can take a peek. I can pull that project down and we can take a, a peek at it. A little preview of the next couple days. Ooh, ooh, this looks dangerous. Yep. I feel like my handle got, my other handle got kind of stuck underneath there. So I'm glad I caught that. There we go. Just kind of aiming again here. Could just draw it on. Theoretically, I could have drawn this whole um, rectangle and X on beforehand, but that sounded like too much work. When I can just eyeball it, and if it's crooked, who cares? All right, do a little back tacking. Okay, forward. There, I just love the look of those little X's and bags. I just feel like, I feel like I'm doing something extra special um, bag-wise when I'm <laughs> making a bag that has has uh, these types of handles. I don't know why I like that so much, but I think it's cute. All right, we are just about done here. Let's get all these fuzzles out of my way. Okay, here we are. So cute. Let's get up higher here there so you guys can see the whole thing. So there's our cute handles. Oh yeah, and we have that just sweet kind of kitty polka dot fabric on the inside. <laughs> and uh, this is a pocket on the front where we put that bright orange underneath. I do kind of like that bright orange. That's a neat little little surprise there. That is a good color. That is bright, bright. Um, but there we are! So we got our cute little guy done. Ooh, you know what would be cute? If we um, did a little um, piece of yarn or something with a button so you can like close it with a little a little like wrap around button thing. That would be cute here. Or like a hair tie. You can sew a hair tie um, to the back and then sew a button to the front and then that hair tie can go around the button. 
Ooh. Oh, Gretchen says, wait, are those new scissors? Uh, they are. They are uh, just about ready. Here is our cute, one of our red ones. Um, we got them in a whole pile of colors and a couple different styles. So I'll share that with you guys yet. I'm just kind of testing these out. But yeah, I'm like loving them so far. It's just like a adorable little um, red stork, this one. So maybe I'll bring out some more colors over the next few days too. Oh, you guys, I also got, um, we'll be talking about these next week, but I got these adorable zippers in the mail too that are all different colors. So I think what we're gonna do, um, I think we're gonna make our next embroidery of the month into a cute little zipper pouch. Um, so we'll, we're gonna get these zippers up in the shop as well, but they're like so many good colors. Like look at this one with the coral and uh, like this yellow, ugh. They're all just yummy. Anyway, so photos of that coming good or soon. Um, and they're gonna be good and um, Yes, I'm super duper excited. So piles of scissors, zippers. Scissors will probably be a little closer to Christmas, but we'll see. I, I got, I'm working on the packaging and everything for them, um, but they do actually match our embroidery floss. So like this one, let me grab, grab it here. Like this one, for example, is our, like our, our Northern Cardinal color. So we got them to match a few different colors of our, embroidery floss so I think it'd be fun that they'd they'd kind of go together but anyway so that's that's coming up so stay tuned for that we'll definitely let you know uh, it'll be a little while yet till we have those but um, they're looking so cute all right so this is done let's uh, pull out the um, granny square stuff quickly all right so this looks like the granny square quilt. So I, uh, um, so on rest of the border is, is the directions on my project tracker sheet, which is so important since we don't work on these very often. So my next step that I, in my note section here is, um, so on rest of border. So I have, a, I have it all right here. I'm not gonna totally unfold it, but we do have um, the side borders to put on yet. But I did want to show you the quilting on it. I got all these scraps here yet too. Um, so the quilting of this puppy is quite intense, but I want to give it a try. So let's, this is the, the pattern. Oh yeah, so here we go. So here, I'm gonna zoom you guys down here again. Um, so this is the suggested quilting diagram, but holy buckaroos, that's crazy. So, but see what I mean? Like, okay, first of all, tons of squiggles, tons of little X's. Oh my God, this kind of scares me. Um, but you can see like in between these borders is just like a straight stitch. That's what I'm talking about, about stitching in the ditch. And same with like around each, each, um, this is gonna take forever, you guys. <laughs> but sewing around each um, block. So it looks like they sewed around each block first, sewed in the ditch of the borders, and then they got super crazy fancy on it. I mean, look at, this is like a whole kind of circle squiggle with this like a starfish in the middle or something. I have no idea how I'm gonna accomplish that at all. Um, I'm sure there's some ruler help or something like that. I think we can draw a circle in the center and try and accomplish this a little bit, but a little unclear on how to get these like really fancy fun designs. I, I'm confident I could probably do this border design. Even these like squares here seem really, really intimidating. Like how do I get it to end up in the exact right spot? Ugh. This seems like a lot of ruler work. So again, maybe I should just get the ruler out and use this as my, using my, um, just like attempt to get better at ruler work. Use this as a, as a learning activity, a practice activity. Oh, those blocks 
look like feather templates. Oh, with a ruler foot. Okay, so, all right, so that's, so Kathy's saying like feather templates. Oh, and Deborah says that is a feather formed into the circle. Oh yeah, it's just kind of like those feather bloops just kind of going around a circle. So it looks like we have a main one at the corner and then there's just like kind of four going around the circle. So it looks like maybe we do the circle first. Those blocks look like feather templates with a, with a ruler foot. Okay, well, I'm not gonna have all those templates, but I do have a circle, but we could just draw a circle and I could follow it. But we do have a, a circle foot. So maybe this is a foot exercise or a, or a ruler ruler exercise. So I do have a circle, so I could try that. And then we just make this goofy shape in the middle somehow, magically. Oh, it's a feather. Oh, it's not a starfish. I'm looking at the reverse of it. It's like, it's a feather on the inside. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like a, the inside is part of the feather. Okay, it is making more sense to me. Not that it'd be easier, but it is like a feather bloop on the inside of it. It's like a circle first. Then you do the bloop on the inside of the feather and it bloops on the outside of the feather, but there's just more on the outside because there's more space to put them. I see, it's just a pile of bloops. Well, that's gonna take a pile of practice, but we'll have a, a ton of practice to do it on. So what we could do, I mean, definitely first, I think we sew the whole quilt in the ditch, like all these ditch lines, um, you know, so around each block. Cause what's that, what that's gonna do is hold the quilt together. Like basically at that point I could be done, right? Um, the quilt will be held together, um, which is gonna be great when I try and do all this fancy stuff cause it's not gonna move around as much because it's all sewn together. But man, even going around each of these squares is gonna take ages. Ugh. But I'm up for it. I'm ready for it. Time to do some fancy stuff. And these are like, it looks like um, two little paisley bloops. Not even paisleys, but it looks like um, like half a feather. Like a feather, two bloops of a feather. Bloop, bloop. And then you're echoing. And then you're going in the opposite direction. Oof, that's going to take some practice too. At least with these kind of feather bloops. You can follow the um, the quilt, so it looks like the each there's it goes in each one of our little um, checkered quilt background things, and then this is just a smaller version of this. Well, I've never done that before, but I do like feathers, so it'd be like a feather bloop, feather bloop all the way down. Echo on the bloop side, and then a feather bloop. Oh man. It's gonna take practice, but I'm I'm super excited. The the hardest part, I think, actually, now that I know that these are kind of feathers and I like feathers, first of all, they're not gonna look this perfect. It's gonna be freehand. Um, but this little zigzag situation in there, that's gonna be tough. That's gonna to be ruler work practice for sure. <sighs> Theoretically, this could be walking foot stuff as well, but I don't think I have the working walking foot. Oh my God. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we will see you guys. All right. Uh, I think uh, we are going to just uh, be done um, now. I think this is our plan for tomorrow for sure. We're going to get both those sides of this this quilt sewn on so we can so I can sandwich this when I'm at my parents' house. Um, yeah, but now I got quilting on the brain and and uh, we're going to figure that out. Gosh, maybe I wonder if I should bring my sewing machine home to my parents' house and see if I can get those feed dogs working. Oh, God, I don't know. Problem machines. <laughs> well, that'd be good if it could get working though. But I love how this little bag turned out and I'm so happy that we did the stripes for it. I think that turned out really sweet, like the little black and purple stripes. Uh, that's that's not the fabric we we piece those together and uh and yeah i'm stoked i'm gonna get th this will be my halloween de decoration now <laughs> we did put a pumpkin outside though though yesterday the chipmunks are eating it already but it's cute when you walk by at least <laughs> so all right you guys thank you again for joining me i know we're we're done a little early uh today but that's okay we can do that every once in a while uh and i will see you again 
Uh, tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, let's crank out the rest of that granny square so we can get in Quiltland. That'd be, that'd be awesome. We need to be in Quiltland for lots of these projects at this point. <laughs> All right, have a great evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.